Hey guys, welcome back to my series, Let's Talk About. Today we are on episode eight, which I actually can't believe that we are almost at 10 episodes. Before we get into this conversation, I wanted to share some exciting news. Let's Talk About will now be on podcast. Yeah, you heard it right. They will be on podcast for you guys to listen to. So I'll be uploading every single episode of Let's Talk About, current episodes that are out onto podcasts every Friday. So they'll be available on Spotify and Apple Music. So if you are a podcaster, if you love to listen and don't have the time to watch, head over to those platforms, follow, add, leave a review and a rating and I would really appreciate it. Okay, so let's get on to this conversation. So to my right, as you can see, I am joined by a very special guest, somebody who I've known all my life better than anybody else, my twin sister, Robin Howells. Hello, everyone. You've probably seen her on a couple of my YouTube channel yeah. videos, uh, mostly in vlogs. I don't think we've done a sit-down video we other than the past as kids. And the sibling Q&A. And the sibling Q&A. Um, but here we are going to have a really in-depth conversation. You guys will be able to hear a testimony, and I am super excited for this episode. So without further ado, let's talk about Sin Cycles. Nothing, nothing but the Today I thought it would be interesting to talk about something that I think we all have come into confrontation with, Mm. which is sin. Um, I think every single Christian has struggled with it one way or another, but there are so many different sins and obviously we live in a sinful society, we live in a sinful world and so I thought it would be cool to have a conversation about it, especially coming from somebody um, who's walked that journey. I know we both have in our different ways, but I'm really excited to have a conversation with you to discover more about your story and for other people to hear and to be encouraged that sin doesn't have to take a hold of you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the first question that I have for you today is, why do we so easily fall into sin? It's a very simple question. Actually, a really simple answer as well. Mm-hmm. Um, me, out of personal experience, um, it's because I was not listening. And I was wanting to do my own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't trust God fully. I just, Obviously, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. I only trusted him with like 60% of it. Mm-hmm. And even if even if you trust God with 99%, your soul, if you don't trust him with your whole heart, you are going to get moved. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to be like shaken. And so because I didn't trust God with everything, um, I want to do things my own way. Yeah. And then when you stop trusting God fully, you stop kind of listening to like listening to him or reading his words, spending time with him, you kind of slowly start to pull back. And mm. that's what I did. And then I found myself struggling. I found myself flirting with sin. So kind mm. of like, oh, this is okay. Or like, I'm not sinning. Mm-hmm. And then I was, and then it gets to the point where the, the conviction of the Holy Spirit is very quiet because yeah. you can't hear him. Yeah. Um, Cause it says my sheep know my voice, but I'm not following God. So. I don't how know, do I know his voice. how do I know his voice. Yeah. And even if you, you, you know when you get that feeling, obviously everyone might get it where it's like, if you've ever started like sin once or something, like a big thing before, you're like, oh my gosh, this is really bad. Like I shouldn't mm. be doing this. Like, oh my God. Um, oh, you shouldn't, don't do it, don't do it. And then the, the more, more you, you entertain it, it the more you, like, because if you don't do it, that's okay. But then the more you entertain it, so say maybe it might, uh, might be alcoholic, I'm not going to get drunk. Okay, I didn't get drunk this time. I didn't, like, drink too much. Bit. Add a little bit. And then every next time you're going to be like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go full in. And it's because that conviction is super quiet and you can't hear. It's, it's like, Lord, you said I won't be able to be overtaken by temptation. And look, this is what, what was going on in my head. This is what's happening mm. and I'm not strong enough. Yeah, because you haven't been spending time with the Lord and you're not mm. like you can't you're not strong enough. It's so true. Like we're not strong enough. And yeah. so for me, saying overtook me like that because I just took my eyes off the father. Yeah. And I trusted so I trusted my own way. Yeah. Um and still I still struggle with that sometimes of just it's it's mostly consistency of being consistent in yeah, the Lord. I was gonna say that, yeah. yeah. Um when you're not consistent, mm. it's the enemy he's just waiting for you to 
he's just waiting. He's just waiting for you just to mess up and, and yeah. get a foothold. Not really mess up because we all struggle, but it's but take your eyes to off take the your father. eyes off the father. Yeah, no, you made a really good point, and that is really valid because I think it's important for us to understand anyway that we're born into a sinful world. Yeah. That okay, we fall into sin because we were born into sin. Yeah. We were born into a world full of it and the enemy you know he runs this world mm. and so when we're born we are almost born with desires yeah. that we haven't really chosen but mm. that we already have that's yeah. why it says Paul says to crucify your flesh, flesh. because he knows that your flesh has its own desires mm. and your spirit has another yeah. and I know countless times when I read like Ephesians and um, Romans. Gala- Romans and Galatians <laughs> Like, those are just like, oh, those are such powerful like books. Everyone's like, I'll start in the New Testament. Like, don't worry, read it in there. Don't read it in there. And I'm like, it's what me, man. I'm like, yeah. but in a good but, way. But they all talk about um, um, sin yeah. um, in a way that they know that that's going to happen. Let me go to a scripture in Galatians 4, no, Galatians 5. 16 to Mm. 17 which basically just kind of answers what we've just spoken about it says but I say walk by the spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh for the flesh sets its desire against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh for these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please Mm. and that there just tells us that they know that the flesh has its own desires but God has a different way and every day we have to crucify our flesh every day we have to put aside our flesh to choose the spirit and I love what you said when you said um about you took your eyes off the Lord yeah and it reminds me of the story in Genesis because I've been reading just the book of Genesis with with Eve and I briefly mentioned it in the podcast episode I did with Corey um that when Eve was in the garden and the enemy came he didn't even lie to her first he just told her something and questioned God that would make her take her eyes off the father Before he even deceived her, yeah. he questioned it and she took her eyes away from mm. the Lord. And then the enemy was able to deceive her yeah. and then she ended up eating the fruit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh my gosh, we end up falling into sin when we take oh, our eyes off the Lord. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and you said about flirting with sin. Yeah. Flirting with sin, you shouldn't even be looking at sin. Like, seriously. Because Eve did and then she fell into a trap yeah. and... Yeah, I ended up doing that. And I feel like it's also a sense of pride in the Mm. sense of, I can handle this. Um, Like, obviously, if you... Like, we shouldn't be flirting with it anyway, but when you do, it's like, like, I'm okay. Mm. Like, I can handle this. And God's Mm. like, what are you doing? The Holy Spirit's like, what are you doing there? You shouldn't be there. You should be watching that. What are you doing? (laughs) Why are you with those people? (laughs) And I'm like... But obviously, again, when, when the more you, like, try and flirt with sin, the more... You, the voice of the Holy Spirit starts to get quieter and quieter because yeah. the Lord is always speaking. It's not like um, when you're saying um, He's gonna, He stops saying not to do that. He's still, yeah. He's still speaking, but you're just not hearing Him. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's sometimes difficult to get to that point because then you have to get over that pride of oh, I can't do this on my own. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to listen to someone telling me what to do because that's basically yeah. what it is. Well, that's the whole thing, isn't it? The the question was asked of. Why do we so easily fall into sin? Well, yes, we live in a sinful world, but you as a Christian, as a born again believer, will fall into sin easier Mm -hmm. if you have no relationship with God. And if your relationship with God isn't strong, if you haven't developed um, a trustworthy, faith-filled, word-established relationship with the Lord, then yes, you are going to easily fall into sin. If you're hanging around in the wrong places, if you're watching the wrong stuff Mm -hmm. and you spend no time in the word in the week, yeah, you're going to easily fall into mm-hmm. sin because you have not got any security yeah. and any armour. Exactly. And also, obviously, we say, like, taking our eyes off the Father, but that doesn't just mean, like, um, reading our word, but it also means praying. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. listening to Benny Hinn about um, prayerlessness and of oh. how it's... Oh, he's so good. Yeah. He's so good about um, when we pray, we gain... Um, uh, what's it called we gain ground over the enemy but when we don't pray he gains ground over us mm. and so every day you this is why it says pray without ceasing we've got to be praying every day because when we don't pray we take our eyes off the father because we're like okay god i'm just going to give you a break a minute it's like it, the enemy is like perfect now i'm going to come in yeah. and when we don't pray we we the enemy gains strength against us it's so true and it says that the enemy in one peter i think four eight 
I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the enemy is prowling around, around like a lion. Prowling seek, around. Prowling around like a lion, seeking all that he may devour. Yeah. And he is always, always watching. And, you know, he doesn't almost watch out for the th- choices that you make, but he yeah. watches out for the mistakes you make. Yeah. And when you don't pray, or when you trip up, or when you slip up with your tongue, yeah. or when you accidentally click on something you're not supposed yeah. to, ah, there's a song and it says the enemy learns from your mistakes. Um, wow. yeah. Oh, it's called Cycles. Oh, and it God, goes, the devil. Cycles. Yeah, Copyright. It says, no, it's oh, okay. fine. Okay. I don't sound that good. <laughs> okay. The devil learns from your mistakes. <laughs> That's how he keeps you in cycles. Yeah. Cycles. And it's it's so true. You know, something that I kind of read about Mm -hmm. was the cycle. And for example, I thought of a cycle of um circle of cycle of life of a plant. And first of all, a seed gets sown. Um then it has to be in soil. So it has to be in good ground. And then you water it and then it grows and then you water it again. And it grows and you have to have sunlight and then it grows and then it becomes a plant and then it eventually dies. And that's almost what can happen with sin. Mm. When you entertain it, when you flirt with it, when you maybe wander your eyes on something that you shouldn't and you do it once, you plant a seed. Mm. And then if you keep doing that repetitively and repetitively, you're watering it Mm. until it becomes... Yeah. a plant yeah and it's rooted deep yeah. inside and the only way you can get rid of it is to completely sever it yeah you can't just cut off the top you have to completely yeah, rip it, root root it all. the, the yeah. seed because it and you know with plants like even with trees you see the fruit of it but underneath the soil it's got roots yeah. that are so long Literally. isn't it which uh, when i found that out when i was like a six-year-old i was like whoa that is mind-blowing <laughs> But that's the same with sin. Yeah. And when you allow sin to have that hold on you, maybe you were younger and I don't know, you, let's say, give me a topic of sin. Pornography. Pornography. (laughs) You stumbled across that when you were six or whatever. And then you didn't tell anybody. You kept it to yourself. Then you kept going back and going back and it got worse and it got worse. And you're a 30 year old man who is struggling with yeah. pornography to this day because when you were a child, you never dealt with it. Yeah. And it's not just a, a, a seed. It's so, yeah, much, it's so more much more than that. Yeah, and it makes a good point because obviously the longer you leave it there, the more roots it has. And so for yeah. some people, when they try and break cycles, it's much more difficult yeah, and it takes longer. So true. As you, I think you said it in your pod uh, with Michaela mm-hmm. um, in, la- in the last episode. Go watch. Mm-hmm. Um, it was about how it took, for some stuff, you got delivered like straight yeah. away. And for others... It did. It took. It took longer, yeah. um, and that's sometimes what happens. Obviously, some people are like, "Well, God, I've been in this cycle. Like, I just want to be free." But you mm. do need to just persevere because there's things sometimes. If it's like for me, there's stuff that has been since I was a child. Yeah. Stuff will take longer, but you just yeah. need to keep going exactly. because the, the God is not a God who would lie. Like when He says, "The sun sets free is free indeed," that means you are free, and so you just need to trust His word yeah. instead of always thinking, "But God, but God." my way but I want to be free now and it's yeah. honestly I just learned just to be like God like and the the uh, the book of Job was just so humbling it mm. really is oh and yeah it's so good and it's like you know what God regardless of whether I'm on this earth and I'm and by the time you come back I'm still in the middle of struggle and I still love you I still trust yeah, you yeah that's so like good. I'm not gonna be like well if God you don't heal me then I'm done like, I'm not giving God an ultimatum because yeah. I, like, God, I don't deserve, like, I don't deserve anything yeah. that he gives me, but he gives it to me anyway because he mm. loves me and I don't have to do anything to, like, do anything mm. to deserve that because he just, he just loves me anyway. Yeah. And so it's like, you know what, God, regardless, I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep persevering, yeah. even if I am struggling still. That's so good, especially what you said about not giving God an ultimatum. Yeah. Because how many times do we do that? We demand that God does something and in yeah. return will will love him. I don't know if you've ever prayed that prayer of, yeah. God, if you stop this sin in my life, if you stop this cycle, I'll follow, you, I'll follow you for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, how many times have we prayed that? That's God's so bad. Like, what on earth is she Thank chatting? you, Lord, for the grace. Um, but, right? But it's so good because we do come to him with these requests and these demands. And it's like, it's so much more than just asking God to take away the yeah. sin you have to make a whole lot of choices. You have to get set free. And it kind of br- it brings me to the next question um, because I think we're getting there anyway, which is how do you stop the cycle of sin? Or how do you stop sinning, essentially? <gasps> so that's a big one. Um, 
you need just to put a well when I think of like a cyclotron I think of like a flow of water and it's just going around in a circle and you just need to put a block in it straight away mm. um and for me it's it's re- first of all it's recognition recognizing and it's being humble mm. um humbling yourself and saying I cannot do this on my own because the, sometimes we're stuck in the cycle of sin because we don't want to um, commit ourselves fully to God. We don't mm. want to commit fully to His way. And we're scared. And we're scared. I mean, yeah. when you've been like for me, I've been in the cycle of sin for so long. You you live in it. It's like your you, comfort. You, I was just gonna you, say it's that. Like you're used to it. So it's like it's like someone take. It's like when you're like in bed in the morning and you're nice and warm. But you know you have to get up and it's like it's someone ripping the so ripping back and, or ah! taking a dummy from a baby. <laughs> exactly. It's like I'm in my comfort place. Like don't take me. Like what are you doing? And yeah. for some people, it is very difficult because they've been in it for so long mm. and so. It's like, God, I'm scared to trust you because I don't know what it's going to look like afterwards because mm. this is what my life has been like f- for so long or for this amount of months or whatever. Yeah. I don't know what it's going to look like when you take me out of it or I don't know what it's going to... Like, I, I can't see myself doing this. And it's, for me, it was getting to the point of humbling myself, saying, Robin, you don't need to know everything. Yeah. Like, you don't need to know how it's going to turn out. You just need to give it to God yeah. and trust him because you're not God. Like, yeah. obviously, you're not going to know that. You're not going to know everything. It's so true. And even, like... Uh, it, that just po- something popped into my head of our version of being set free or our mm. version of being clean mm. may look a lot different to God's version. Yeah. You know, because yeah. when, when we think of, oh God, you know, I just want to be free from this or when we're actually still holding on to a yeah. lot of things, it's like we have a complete different perspective as God, mm. you know, which I think is, yeah, a, re- a really good point to add. But I had a scripture that I wanted to share. Can I borrow your phone? Um, because as I was reading up on this, um, the scripture literally popped into my head and I'm going to read it in the message translation because I mean, it, it's just so good. Um, and you will understand why it's Romans seven, of course, God, I've got to be a moment if we're talking <laughs> about sin, uh, Romans seven, 14 to 24. Um, but just bear with, because this scripture is, um, awesome and it's in the message translation. Message. This is Paul speaking. I can anticipate the response that is coming. I know that all God's commands are spiritual, but I'm not. Isn't this also your experience? Yes, I'm full of myself after all. I've spent a long time in sin's prison. Hmm. What I don't understand about myself is that I, de- that I decide one way, but then I act another, doing things that I absolutely despise. So if I can't be trusted to figure out what is best for myself and then do it, it becomes obvious that God's command is necessary. Mm -hmm. But I need something more. For if I know the law but still can't keep it and the power of sin within me keeps sabotaging my best intentions, I obviously need help. (laughs) I realise that I don't have what it takes. Mm -hmm. I can will it, but I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. My decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. Something has gone wrong deep within me and gets the better of me every time. It happens so regularly that it's predictable. The moment I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. I truly delight in God's commands, but it's pretty obvious that not all of me joins in that delight. Part of me covertly rebel, and just when I least expect it, they take charge. I've decided everything and nothing helps. I'm at the end of my rope. Is there no one who can do anything for me? Isn't that the real question? The answer, thank God, is that Jesus Christ can and Mm. does. He acted to set things right in this life of contradictions where I want to serve God with all my heart and mind, but I am pulled by the influence of sin to do something totally different. Bars. (laughs) Bars. (laughs) You mind as well. I know, but isn't that amazing? And I remember reading, because I've read the whole book of Romans, like on a study, like plan, and... Oh my gosh, that hit me so hard because you do get into that place as humans. And I know I was there where some certain things, yeah, I chose to, to do sin wise and other things. I just couldn't help myself. I wanted to do right, yeah. but I could not could do it. And after true. I would do it, I would be like, Lord, <sighs> what's going on? I'm so sorry. But then I do it again and again and I just wouldn't understand. But even Paul says there that we are born with that. We yeah. have that sinful nature in us. Yeah. But Jesus Christ came so that we wouldn't have to try and struggle. Yeah on our own, that we yeah. wouldn't have to strive to be free of sin mm. by our own strength, but by his strength. And I think that, well, that was an encouragement to me when I first um, read that scripture is, yeah, that's so true. I I, I want to do certain stuff. Mm. I want to do right by the law, but I'm struggling to do so. But 
there is somebody out there who can help me and that's Jesus Christ who can save me who can set me free and I kind of want to go into that a little bit and if your story because I know I've talked about it a lot and referred to you because what you went through is so relevant (laughs) in like every podcast episode I talk about practically (laughs) and so I want you to go into a little bit more of that of how Jesus Christ set you free and what that journey looked like for you because I know we both went on different journeys Mm -hmm. with sin and flirting with sin but I know yours was yours will relate to a lot of people I think watching um yeah Um, and basically my my testimony is basically that scripture about I I, it reminds me of um kind of awareness saying I I know what I have to do but I don't have the strength to do it was that Star Wars yeah I'm, I'm so it. glad I knew that because I actually don't <laughs> like Star Wars. Okay. Um, but that's literally what I was, I was been like for like a lot of, a massive portion of my life is God, I know what I have to do and I don't want to do it because I know it's, it's complete. Like what Paul is saying is exactly how I felt. If I don't want to do this, God, I love you. I love your commands, but I, I physically can't. Like, what am I supposed mm. to do? And I, uh, I uh, didn't get to the end of that scripture. Um, yeah. Must have not because it Can took me so long to... Yeah. You know, can I just pause you there before you go into your story? Because what you said about you love God, but you're still sinning is you can still love God, love him with all your heart and still sin. Mm -hmm. But the the key thing to not sin in is to fear God. Yeah. And that's that's what I realize is, yeah, you can love God and do everything that he hates. Mm. But it's when you fear him Mm. that you you can't do anything that he hates. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But that's great. (laughs) No, no, I said true. Um, So. Getting into my testimony, um, it's a it's it's a very different one to Alana's. Obviously, if, if you've watched on, the, on this channel, you'll know her testimony. Um, and before I say it, it's just important to know that, like, it doesn't matter where you're from, the enemy will still come for you. Like, we li- we grew up in the same environment, mm-hmm. the exact same environment, because we're twins, so it's like a little experiment. Um, mm-hmm. But the enemy affected us in, in different ways. Infected, um, it, good effect, word. yeah, affected. I meant to say affected. But infected but is is it also a good Holy word. Spirit, just come out. <laughs> um, uh, but for me, along my struggles with uh, pornography and like masturbation and all that stuff, um, that's been like my main like struggle. Because everyone still there's some stuff that the enemy still tries to pull us in. Mm-hmm. And that for me, like like alcohol, nothing. Like no boys, boys nothing. no. Like I do. I was drugs, like drugs, nothing. nothing. Like I was scared. I was scared. Like even watching horror films. Like mum and dad, these like they we did their job so right. <laughs> we were the opposite. Um, but all that stuff like pornography and that I think I was about six or maybe five I was very young and I think I have no idea how it happened I'm gonna have to ask Holy Spirit for clarity but I just suddenly just touched myself Mm. and I was really confused and Mm. I was like oh this is weird and then I suddenly there was like a um like on tv when there's like people kissing and stuff and I was really intrigued with that and I and it was the craziest thing how it just sparked out of nothing. Mm. I, mean, I as soon as I did it, I felt literally like I was about to throw up. Like I felt mm. so guilty. I was like, oh god, I'm never gonna do that again. I'm never ever gonna do that again, as we all say. And then we do it again. Um, and for the longest time, when I was a child, when I was when I was a child, I felt the most guilty. Like it was like it ate me up. Like it literally was the most horrific feeling ever. Afterwards, I would cry every time afterwards because I was like, God, this is. Like, I'm so sorry, God, because I felt like a disappointment. I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm a dad find out I am so done. Like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, you know, if you're yeah. saying like, oh my gosh, like no one could, oh my God, and I'll just forget about it. Um, Like control, alt, delete, like. <laughs> <laughs> and then it would happen again. And then I would control, alt, delete again. And then um, so that was basically my life for the longest time. Um, And there was times where I would go a week without doing it. And then suddenly it would just be like a bit after bit and then mm. it was it wasn't it was it was still quite soft until I don't know what I don't know if it was in year seven or maybe mm. year six and then there was like um like I'd found a hashtag and it took me to like actual like hardcore pornography like but and I was like I, I literally threw it I literally felt so sick when I saw it. I was like what the heck this is so grim ew and then but when things with pornography is that you need more to yeah. um 
like you what's what it? are you talking about with the brain or something yeah like the dopamine hits like yeah you like it's like you run out when you get to a certain point and it's like with drugs though isn't it yeah because it's, like, it's literally with like drugs, drugs they, they always say that you will you'll never have your best hit as your first hit yeah and then you will always be striving to have yeah. this, the, that hit that you had yeah. when you first had it but it will yeah. never you can't compare. like I, the same amount as well, yeah, like, you can't have, like, the same amount and have the same hit as you did at the start. You yeah. have to have more and more. That's so and true. Li- literally, that is what pornography is like. And people in our society are like, a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people are like, it's okay. But people that understand that when you get so deep into it, you physically, you don't get any pleasure by looking at something that's really soft. Like, you you, yeah. you don't. You need to get more because that's what the brain is like. I need more. Mm. And so then you start to get down roots that are, like, dark roots. And that's mm. how, obviously, you've got dark web stuff and loads of people yeah. and, like, you know, pedophilia and all that stuff. It's all tied. It's in, all tied. Yeah. It's all tied. It's, per, it's perverted sex, and mm-hmm. I know we briefly spoke about it in the in the episode before, um, but it is perverted, and Satan will do everything that he can to make something so pure and holy to be disgusting, to be awful, to be tainted, and to make you feel a way um, that you were never meant to feel. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and so that was like a complete spiral, and mm. it was, oh my god, it was awful. But I was like. I, I did feel like a double life, but it was like a secret. It was like, it wasn't even a double. It was like a secret life. Yeah, I guess um, my double life was a bit more obvious. Yeah, mine was very secretive. And I even hid it from myself in the day. In the daytime, I was okay. And then until yeah. I got to a point where I was, I fantasized, I found, look, I fantasized a lot and yeah. I daydreamed a lot. And that's where the enemy got in really quickly. Because yeah. then it wasn't just at night then. It was like, I was having these thoughts in the, in the day. day. And then when it got to high school, it was difficult because obviously you hit puberty and things and you just start feeling more emotional towards boys and stuff. And to me, there was a point where I really struggled to see people normally. Yeah. I mean, even myself, I didn't really look in the mirror often in high school. Yeah. Um, but didn't that change the way you saw yourself yeah. and your identity as well? Yeah. Because I know you struggle with that yeah. in a season of your life because, you know, pornography doesn't just affect... No. It doesn't just affect the, the thing that yeah. you're in it affects so much yeah. more and I always say that pornography is never the root it's no it's a, a, it's, a, it's a symptom it's a symptom of yeah. a root issue yeah Go and ahead. so um obviously I, I had like lots of insecurity and um, like comparison I'm comparing myself to mm. you not feeling good enough um like I was still and um, again same as you still in church I'm pretty sure I was leading worship um, at that yeah. time because Alana was too scared to lead worship at youth because so I, I was living a simple life she was living life, that so life I didn't want and I thought that Robin was perfect at this oh. time <laughs> for her whole childhood I thought she was just perfect and she got on my nerves and we didn't have a good relationship no. because I I was like how is she how is she perceived as so innocent because that's what everybody used to say to yeah. me and I didn't know what you were doing behind yeah. closed doors but, uh, but I knew that you were annoying yeah. to me <laughs> And so I was so frustrated because I was like, she's always preaching. She's always, you know, speaking. Yeah. She She's definitely got a relationship with yeah. God. She's definitely going to be a pastor when she's older. And look at me, I'm living this crazy life. Yeah. But deep down, that I was, was just, that was just yeah. an outside, yeah. an outside facade. Yeah, it was. And honestly, it was a bit different to you. I really, I'm not saying I was like, smart but I kind of like I I knew I knew what I was doing and I wasn't stupid like and I knew that God still I knew God still loved me yeah like I, I knew, actually but, didn't know that I knew but I then obviously at times it would feel that um I had to earn God's love or there was a range to God's love so mm. God loved me a little bit less than he would he did like, like last week because last week I was like I said something I prayed at youth in a circle <laughs> Um, and I didn't watch anything for a week, and so God loved me a lot more than He did just then. <laughs> yeah. That's I, that's that's the, obviously it's gone. That's completely wrong. If you, if you think like that, like that's wrong. Like no, God loves you. Like <laughs> that's wrong. Um, that's what I I felt, and obviously mm. it distorted my view of God in a way because I yeah. I'm I'm make, I'm you're saying, making up a version, a version of, of God, God when I. Yeah, and so I was obviously still in church, and I at that point I don't really worship anymore, but I was leading worship, and I struggled, um, yeah. because I sh- I struggled a lot with br- my brain and like in terms of clarity, because I was a really smart kid, like as in like yeah, I could were. remember things really quick, and mm. I was I'm still quite quick now, but in terms of remembering stuff, I'm just it's a work in progress at the moment because I just bombarded my brain with so many things. Yeah, that's and so then true. it when um, yeah I think it was still in high school. It wasn't just pornography visually it was also reading if you read books that are full of smut 
that is classes pornography if you don't know um which i didn't know until i that is until so we did the, the off limits and i and i was doing the if there's a program called off limits if you want to catch up on that and we do yeah, a one we'll on pornography it in the link and i was researching that to get facts on pornography and then it told me the different outlets and i was like reading i was it's so, listen, it's it. so true i was like but it makes so much but sense. I mentioned that in again in last um last episode of Let's Talk About yeah. with Michaela is that people think that it's just watching but it's listening. It's listening. Even what you listen to, what you listen to what, what you um read. Yeah. What I read and it wasn't necessarily the same high as like, like I didn't get any like pleasure from like reading, but it fueled the fire. It was literally mm. like I was pulling gasoline because then I was having all these thoughts wow. and I was thinking, Oh my gosh and then it kind of fueled that for fantasizing in the day and daydreaming and uh, fantasizing at night. Not less necessarily about like someone I like I didn't even fancy anyone like believe it or not like oh I lie I lie I was just I say. just forgot I forgot I lie but I didn't fantasize about that person anyway it wasn't yeah. that it was just the idea of being yeah. intimate with someone yeah. that for me was like because oh, I'd like yeah. never kissed a boy properly besides mm. when I was like a child like mm. <laughs> just, yeah <laughs> so when was the point where you you almost found freedom what should I say or well, that yeah well it was a kind of... yeah it was a, a youth I think I don't know how old I was I think I was about 12 um not 12 I lie again I was in my teens and there was a youth night we were doing on like a sex sex talk um mm, and they it was with Chloe and Sam and they did it on pornography and I was like Man, I, I'm really grateful they did that because they made it feel really comfortable. They did. I felt so comfortable. Like, when they're hearing it, it I never again, said it's nothing like, though. I know you didn't, but I was like, obviously hearing it, the word pornography, like me saying it, it's like, like I used to fuck. hate the word. It, oh. Even now, I just, it's like, man. But um, obviously, you've got to say it anyway, you know, scientific and all that. But I felt really like when they were speaking, I was like, they made it such like a, like a way, like I just felt really safe when they were talking mm. about it. And then I was like, like this conviction that I should, I should tell some. I really should tell. I should tell Chloe. And before this, I was like, I'm taking this to my grave. Ain't no one find out about this. Like this is like, egg. I was like, no one. I I just couldn't imagine telling anyone about this. And then Holy Spirit, a hundred percent. I'm sat with Chloe. I said, like, Chloe, can I tell you something? And so we're like at the back on on the chairs, and I'm like, it's taking me a good ten minutes to tell her. I'm like, I am. Um, oh, you're not going to be mad. She's like, no, Robin, I've heard everything. I'm like, you haven't heard this. Obviously, she has. Um, and I'm like, I, um, I, what? And she's like, okay. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm literally like, me like, now when anyone tells anyone me anything. I'm like, okay. I'm like, yeah, well, I know, bless, <laughs> bless the youth. They're like, I do this. I'm like, yeah, okay. And, the, and the, for me, I was expecting her to be like, really okay I, I was expecting it to be because i'm obviously my pastor's kid so i was expecting her to and she was and she was like okay and she's asked me like how long when was the last time and it's a friday and she's like when was the last time and i was like tuesday <laughs> i was like i don't know why i don't know and she was like oh okay because i'm pretty sure i never watched it that night um but i was like oh my gosh and she was like you need to tell your mum or any you tell your parents i was mm. like no 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 she's like you don't have to tell them you can write a letter and i was like oh yeah so i got home and obviously i didn't tell lana anything me and lana were sharing a room when i was on my bunk bed like writing a letter <laughs> like, how do i write this to her writing it and then i wrote the words like porn in like the smallest i literally remember seeing it the smallest of writing and then finally it was massive and then i watched and just like, I don't know why I don't know why I did not even know how I ended the letter and I, I kind of folded it and then um, Alana was up I was waiting for her to go to bed and my mum was sat in the, her armchair in the armchair by the fire mm. in her old house and I was literally waiting for Alana to go to bed and I was like she wasn't so I just gave her the letter I was like mum can you read this once Alana's gone to bed once Alana, when Alana leaves she's like okay so like, not yet not yet not yet I said okay and so Alana went out to bed and I said you could read it now. And then um, I sat on the kitchen counter, just like, like, I, I didn't even know what to think. I was like, oh my God, what is she gonna say? And I was preparing myself, wow. like, cause I was like- Such a massive was, step though. It literally was, cause honestly, like the guilt and shame ate me up every single time, um, which I'm grateful for, but there was a point, I did forget to mention there was a point, because obviously when you feel that conviction is the Holy Spirit, but there was a point where, I got really scared because I didn't feel any conviction. And that was a point where I was more scared because mm. I was like, I don't feel 
bad about this mm. and I was like oh my gosh am I too far gone mm. and there was a point where I I'm not going to say but I searched into something in the browser which no results came up for because it was that bad and but because I couldn't I was so deep in it that I couldn't just wow. get pleasure off just something normal yeah. it's not normal but like something like people would call it average like yeah. I, I couldn't yeah and so I was like I was so shocked at myself when I typed it and I was like oh my gosh and I just threw my phone and went to bed mm. and I was like I can't believe I'd I can't believe I've got to that point. And in my head, I'm still thinking, God, you know, God, I need help. But I was really... Still, pride isn't always puffed up. and But it was very subtle, that pride of, I don't want to tell God. Oh, I don't want to... I, I don't know. I don't want to address I this. I don't address this. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to tuck it under the bed. Yeah. And, and then, obviously, during that, mum and dad are speaking. And, um, obviously, they're preaching on Sundays about, you know, that anyone wants to keep stuff in the dark. And I'm like... Yeah, but this is fine, you know. This is this needs to be in the dark, so this yeah. is okay. Um, so fast forward to when I told mum, and she, I was like waiting, and she said, "Robin," and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And I went in there, and she just opened her arms and gave me a hug, and I was like, "Don't cry." I wasn't really a crier then because my really? my emotions were very numb. Um, in wow. terms of like, I numb myself a lot. Um, not purposely, but it's like. But that's what it does. It's, to it does you. to you because the more you bombard yourself with these emotions, yeah. the more you have to get on with it. And if you don't want to tell when, anyone. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, Sorry. but when you do it as well, it's like you kind of put your emotions to the side. Yeah. So that it, it's really weird how it just kind of something else takes yeah, control. It's, it's 100 demonic. It is like, demonic, and you put, you put those things to the side, and then they come back you, after. I know, and you're like, <laughs> and then you're like, feel so where were guilty. you when? I, like, like seriously, and you don't feel guilty in that moment. You have to switch off to you be able to. to not feel the guilt that comes with it, which is just crazy. Yeah. But that's exactly what's in there. And you do Carry on, sorry. So, mum, mum, um, yeah, yeah, embraced you, and I sat on a lap, and then you told um, on the armchair. And while she, we burned the letter because the fire was going on, so we burned it and she prayed with me. And then um, we hadn't, we didn't, weren't in deliverance ministry at that time, so we didn't know how spiritually deep it was. Mm. Um, but I told Dad, and so I was like, Mum, are you going to tell Dad? I didn't tell him, Mum told him. And then we sat in this beautiful, um, like, Chinese restaurant place called Asaga, which is so good. And um, he bought me a saga, and he's like, can I have your film? I was like, okay I'm pretty sure I was like deleted everything but I don't know he had got this magic lock he just went he was just going through my phone and I was like oh my gosh just so he could just so he could get rid of all the stuff yeah um and just to like just get rid of it all yeah. um and he asked me like I think he was more heartbroken the fact that he's like why didn't you tell me yeah and I think that for him was that was difficult he's like why don't you tell me and I was like eating my saga like that lump in throat like <laughs> um like I don't know <laughs> I don't oh. know. I didn't. I just. I didn't feel like I could because I didn't know what mum and dad went through either, mm. um, and how deep the stuff went. Obviously, because a lot of stuff is hereditary. Um, I didn't know that, and so um, I told them, and everything was great. Then I got prayed for, and then um, I was pursuing God, and then I took my eyes off God a bit, and then you I relapsed. put my eyes back on God, then I relapsed, and then again I was back in it, and I didn't want to tell anyone. Because I thought, oh my god! It's gosh. always bad when you go back a, back second, a second time. time it's and like, then, no, no, no one can forgive no me. No one can forgive me. And then um, there was a conference, and mum and dad already knew because the Holy Spirit told them. And so then they prayed for me, and obviously I cried. I remember a rise conference. A rise conference. Same conference with Jonathan Conway. I was just with you, which crazy. Was crazy. And they prayed for me then, and then um, like second time was horrific. A third time. I mean, like, it's just so rough. Um, but I knew, I was learning my lesson slowly. So um, even though I kept going back, because you were learning. I, was, I was learning more to repent straight away. Um, and I learned, I learned the long way and the hard way that the longer you keep it, the worse it will get. So for me, I would say that I wouldn't even say sorry to God because I feel so bad. And I would basically do an Adam and hide my face from him and go in the bushes. And I would be like, God, don't look at me. And there was times even like post that, because it's a bit long. I'm 21 almost. In um, but I was like, it was, it was so... Like I would literally afterwards, I would hide my face. Oh, I would go under my covers because I'd I'd literally try and hide from God because that's how guilty I felt. Even afterwards, and it was really frustrating for me because I was like, God, I really want to be free. Like, why haven't you freed? Like, and it it wasn't that it was like, 
it was more for myself. I, God, why can't I do this? Yeah. And obviously that scripture is all my will, like willpower. I, I don't want to sin, yet, yet I do sin. And for me, that was so difficult to kind of comprehend. It's like, God, it why, can't, why can't you set me free like you did? Because then afterwards, oh, you yeah. got free. You got set, you got set free. Got delivered. You got delivered. Um, I'm pretty sure I was struggling still afterwards. Because I, like, yeah, because you, I think you were because... Like, up until that point before I got delivered, we didn't have a close relationship. Like, bear this was, in mind. I thought we did. <laughs> Ish. I was so nasty to you. <laughs> you were so mean to me. <laughs> you were just nice um, and annoying at the same time. But we didn't have a relationship. So even while, like, Robin did actually tell me the same day and I just brushed it off. Like, I said... I told you what? About that you were watching pornography oh. that day that you wrote the letter, the next day. Really? And that, yeah, and I did not care, to be honest, because yeah. I was like, I'm dealing with my own stuff. I literally <laughs> brushed it off, like, and I, whatever. I, I, I didn't... I didn't <laughs> but no, like, you, you were scared because I told you and you were like oh did dad like see anything else because I'm pretty sure you were watching yeah it I was well. too so but you were like different really for me scared. because like when I spoke about my testimony like there was a lot of things like pornography that completely went and I got completely set free from um however nice I never was in it deep as you no. um like I never actually watched like full pornography yeah. it was more like soft yeah. what you soft what one, people yeah. yeah and I never got to that point because I was too terrified to ever like google I was terrified I'm scared of google yeah google. I'm scared <laughs> of dad on my phone I think I was more scared of dad yeah. than whatever and yeah. so I never went to that point and I'm so yeah like be grateful I am yeah. grateful that I, I didn't but I, I did other stuff yeah you know? yeah no of course yeah but I was I was scared to do it and when I typed it in I literally was super scared but I watched it anyway because it it wasn't just me spiritually. It's like yeah. that demon, like, go on. And, like, kind of coerced you into it because it literally felt like it wasn't me. And there was a, a lot of the times where it didn't feel like it was me. Like, I felt it was, yeah. like, out... Not out of body, but it just... Uh, yeah. It felt like I was out of my brain. Like, it wasn't... It wasn't all yeah. my... F- me. I was just doing... Yeah. I was just complying with something else. Wow, that is such a good Which point. Is, um, but, yeah, explain how you felt because then I got delivered from that, from, like, all of that stuff, yeah. from alcoholism. Yeah. Like, obviously, I kind of drank, but then now I don't drink at all. Yeah. And there's so many things that I got completely set free from, literally like that. Um, but that was through deliverance ministry, like yeah. demonic strongholds yeah. being broken off me. Yeah. So got completely <laughs> yeah. radically changed. Well, you got delivered, then I got delivered as well after. And they yeah. caught, listen, listen, pornography does not just bring in lust. That wow. stuff that goes that deep. Um, and stuff that you don't even know, that you think is just... You think yeah. you know what you're getting yourself into, but you don't. you don't. And I didn't know how deep it went, but I got yeah. delivered, which mm-hmm. was great, and I literally felt so light, and it was awesome, but I didn't keep my eyes on the Lord, and I... I which is something that I mentioned about on mm-hmm. one of the... If you haven't seen, it's called Let's Go Deeper on my YouTube channel, ah. where I explain, yeah. this is the only reason why I'm here where I am now because I could have easily fallen back into Mm -hmm. pornography easily fallen back into like I don't know drinking doing drugs and doing whatever I want living a promiscuous life the reason I did it is because I kept my eyes on Jesus and because I kept close to God and once I experienced his love and all of that stuff I genuinely could not go back to those things but it even till this day, like I daily have to renew myself. Yeah. It was a walk and it was a journey. It always yeah. is going to be. But it's that moment that you take your eyes away from the Lord. Yeah. Even if you think you'll be okay for a day. Um, don't, don't, do don't it. risk it. Don't risk it. Don't, don't even, don't even entertain that. Oh, I won't win a bubble like today because I'm really busy. Like you won't, you cannot survive without it because it's, you can't. It's like putting yourself, it's like going to war without any gear on. You know, in Ephesians 6, it says to put on the full well, armour of God. God. It doesn't say take you it off it doesn't on a weekend. Say take it off. Yeah, it take it off when you go to bed. Yeah. Keep it on. You have to keep it on and you have to constantly put it on and pray that over yourself. And even plead in the blood, anointing yourself. I remember, just quickly to interject, um, a period of my life where I was struggling with dreams. Yeah, so after nice. I got delivered, like I got, I've been delivered like three times from yeah, different things. I been um, but I was struggling times. with, I think it was fear or maybe fear and it was dreams and nightmares Mm -hmm. and so for probably like six to eight months I would anoint my room do you remember that yeah I would anoint my room every night on every single bed on every single window frame I literally anointed everything I anointed myself as well that's gone and I took communion as well for like a good like every day for like two months or something but I forgot to say I kind of um 
I like that's probably also because of me because I um dabbled in witchcraft for a while um during the pandemic which was a door from it was that fantasizing thing of mm. even from pornography all that stuff merged into I don't want to be here anymore so I'm just gonna lay really still in my bed and hope I wake up somewhere else which is what TikTok had, I had something on TikTok is ridiculous saying it wasn't demonic and it wasn't thing and I was doing these meditations and opening myself up to so much thinking that and, and it all started and it all started a seed. A seed, like one seed that was so and I was watering it really good and um, I was just watering it and allowing my mind to be filled with all these things good thing I was flipping anointing the room then <laughs> I flipping know it. <laughs> do you know one because I was meeting with um these ladies in church and um, part part of the prayer team and they encouraged me to do it and you know at this time in our lives we shared a room and so yeah, oh yeah, you can imagine room. the spiritual warfare going in the room when Robin's over here doing witchcraft and watching pornography and and I have just been delivered and set free, yeah. taking communion and trying to anoint the room. And we literally are like two feet apart <laughs> yeah, in our beds. That is, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I didn't think yeah. about that. I wasn't watching too much pornography or all, all that stuff. Yeah, but like, there, was, there was a time I took a long break, but I was still doing masturbation because that for me, like, yeah. I know came, you were. Yeah, I, I know you know I were. Because there was a point, if if you, if anyone's struggling with this, you'll know that. Well, for me anyway, my I'm, I'm very creative. My brain, like, if you imagine me to do an app, like think of an apple like boom like high definition hdr like okay you know Joe. anyways and so for me i didn't need pornography anymore because yeah. i'd watched so much stuff that it was wow. like a tv in my brain wow. and so i could just think of something or or and or anything which is what i struggled with to come out of it because mm. how do you turn off your brain how do you turn off your mind obviously mm. you know, mind in the word um but so mm. i was doing like like all that stuff and I was getting convicted of it of like yeah. like doing this like witchcraft or I say new age because yeah. it wasn't it wasn't obvious like obviously any it, when it you told obvious. me about some of the stuff I was like Robin I don't think that's right and I told mum and dad um which let's talk about that because what I want to kind of talk and um, note on or stay on for a, a little bit is the fact that sin doesn't just affect you Oof, it affects yeah. his other it affects other people yeah. and especially with pornography which is so inward it feels like it just affects you yeah but it affects so everybody else because obviously you know with my lifestyle I guess um with drinking and stuff it can affect other people vi vi visually because you know I'm getting drunk I'm like I don't know doing whatever with guys and you know it that's public for people to see but something like pornography is so hidden that you think that it only affects you yeah but in fact it affected it affected really, me. Yeah, very selfish of me not to think that it affected you. But then my sin affected you as well. Yeah. When I was going through what I was going through, I had so much self-hatred that it overflowed <laughs> into hatred for my sister. Um, but then when you were struggling with pornography, I was, oh, I had been set free from everything. And I, can I, should we yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. that? I began, I, I can't remember when it was, but it was for about a year. I just all of a sudden started getting these crazy dreams um, and they were about Robin, like she was literally in pretty much everyone. And it was like, I would never say it out loud it's because so they're the most, I can't remember half of them, praise the Lord, but the Lord. they were like perversive dreams and you doing crazy things. And like, it, um, they were like violent dreams as well. Yeah, like, I had a lot of violent ones yeah, too. Yeah, but say if like you hurting me or it, they were crazy or stuff being hap happening yeah. to us. And I had those consistently. Um, I'd say like one every week and sometimes it was more and... Bear in mind, I had been delivered and set free from the stuff I, I dealt with in my past. And so I had these for about a year and I was like, what is going on? And then I began to notice with Robin and I just knew something wasn't right. And I knew that you were you were struggling, whether it was pornography, masturbation or at new age, whatever it was. Something was going on because I couldn't sleep in my room without having a nightmare. And I remember I began to sleep at my nan's house. And every time I slept at my nan's house, because she had a spare room, I wouldn't get any nightmares. Mm. And so I knew <laughs> it was the room. Yeah. And because we shared a room, and as much as I was anointing the, the room, like, if you were doing something opposite, then it's yeah. like that friction, yeah, isn't that it? When we're both going against each other. And so I remember speaking to mum, this probably was like 2021, end of 2021 or 2022. And I spoke to mum and I said... I think something's going on with Robin. And I told her what I thought you were doing. I told her about the dreams. And I, I don't think she believed me at first. <laughs> no, Jen, I yeah. don't think, I think she she said, oh, well, I've asked her. She seems to be doing great. So, but, but 
And I was like, and then I, I, I remember I mentioned it to her. And then because she said that, I was like, oh, it must be me then. I'm mm-hmm. the issue. It's not Robin. But then later on, I found out that, um, yeah, you were struggling in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was too scared to say something because it was an area that I had been delivered from and I didn't want to get there. But I, I hated sleeping in the same room as you. I had sleepless nights a lot of the time. I would have like crazy thoughts and I would overthink like crazy think that you were doing something that you weren't because it was yeah. so it was so crazy you know mm-hmm. yeah so that's um it does and just affects way more than you think and I thought I was I don't even know I didn't even think about you yeah. and not in the way like I assumed you were doing okay and that also for me that was frustrating yeah. because I'm like how, god how come Alana has been delivered of all this stuff and I yeah. I haven't like I and I really wanted to be free like yeah. gen, like sincerely like no, genuinely I know, I know. and so it was so difficult for me to comprehend the fact that like like Alana's you she has if you know if you've seen her bible it's very cute and highlighted and there's the stickers and I just I just not work that way like I think it's really cute but that's a lot of effort for me and so I was like how is she so good at like just organizing things and just organizing her brain and stuff into that I have to because I overthink otherwise yeah. <laughs> and so for me me being absolutely silly thinking that God can only free me a certain way and that I'll have to in order to stay free I'll have to go in the same way as Alana which is completely wrong yeah. because we're all made differently and yeah. I didn't I didn't realize that which is why when it comes to sin comparing it's just it's just it's just from the enemy thief of joy it is a thief of joy but obviously when we ended up communicating to each other and I ended up telling yeah. Robin because I heard her testimony Oh, youth, are you? and I told her we literally cried yeah. for like an hour and a half told each other everything um and our relationship since yeah. then have never been stronger and yeah. I would be I would ask you yeah. now you know I'd be like what are you yeah. doing are you struggling yeah I'm glad she does because I would never ever say it ever I what, don't think tell so me. no not in that one no as in like I would struggle if I was struggling I struggle to say it yeah because it's a very yeah big it's but very I've asked difficult you, like quite a lot yeah. of times and sometimes I'll be like a little bit. And yeah, <laughs> you just like, and I was like, you might as well tell me now because otherwise I'm gonna get in in a dream. Because I start, because I stop, cause like, it's just so frustrating. Because the enemy when pornography tries to keep you on your own, and so you feel like you can't talk to anyone, even yeah. though people are like, I'm here to talk. It's very difficult because yeah. the enemy's always saying, don't tell that person, don't tell that person, yeah. or you're gonna feel ashamed yeah. or whatever. And so I think it's, it was it's building up that communication yeah. with somebody. Like yeah. I. Sorry to it's interrupt, okay. but I would encourage, you know, I, I guess we're talking about pornography because that's Robin's testimony, but with any sin that you're struggling with, um, you need to have someone around you, around you and you need accountability yeah. as well, especially with a, an experience like yours. Like with mine, I have people in my life keeping me accountable for just my journey and my walk with God. But when it comes to what you're dealing with, you were obviously actively struggling with it and so you need someone to be yeah, able to walk alongside people. of you to, to yeah. help you and to say what have you you know weekly yeah. what have you what been have doing you, in the yeah. week how have you struggled yeah. how have you spent time with God and to yeah. pray for you yeah. and to intercede for you and to love you but it's when you don't say anything that you will mm. get ate up yeah and I'm so grateful for the people that I've had like I would not be here without my beautiful sister and like all the pastors around me and friends and stuff who just mm. who know about my journey who who helped me and just because yeah. you can't do this on your own you can't yeah. and so I think I got there's a point where I, I did kind of relapse a few times and it's very it's very difficult because telling my mum like I it's easy to tell my mum now because it happens not often but I just I know just pride is such a liar and just to be like Robin yeah. you just need to say it even if you don't feel it yeah. and then there's a point where um I was still struggling like I think it was the longest time I think I'd literally gone for about a year of like free obviously I struggled yeah. but I was I was just gone. I was just like free, yeah, um, and I felt amazing, and yeah. and then that's amazing though. Yeah, it was it was great, but it's because I kept my eyes on the Lord and I just kept filling yeah. my mind up with with good things. But um, also, don't I would just say, do not underestimate the enemy. I don't think oh, nothing can sway me now. Like I'm so good. Like don't ever get to that I'm place. So on fire I'm for so God on fire for now. God. Just don't just don't even get into that mindset because the enemy is like, oh, let's be pride there. Let's see it. see how well you think that because that's exactly <laughs> so what happened good. to me. So and good. I thought I'm I like in that moment I was like I can never ever be swayed ever. Like I'm just on it. Like I just feel so good. What do you know? Um, I was completely like turned on my head like like a car just went straight at me and I 
I think it was the end of la uh, end of last year, yeah. and we're in February, so yeah. that was not long, not too mm -hmm. long ago, and um, it was the most awful thing I think I've ever experienced in my life, and I was so con confused, but mm -hmm. I was in a position now because it happened. It has literally happened for so long. I was like, okay, God. I will never, ever stop going to you. I will never, ever. There's nothing that can take me away from you. Like, after every time, I would always... The funny thing is, the maturity, even though I was still seeing the maturity in it, was I would still... I would say, God, I, afterwards, I'm so sorry. And it was, we talked about it yesterday, how difficult it is or was for me to repent um, afterwards because it, like, literally, I physically ick. It's a physical ick because mm. your flesh is like, what are you doing? Um... But your spirit, you you know you have to repent straight away. I know I knew I had to repent because I knew I grieved the Holy Spirit and I mm. and it was a genuine sorry, not because I I wanted to be forgiven, but because I just I just really was God. I'm so sorry. I've grieved the Holy Spirit. I'm mm. so sorry, Lord. I love you and I thank you for your forgiveness for me. And I said to God, God, there's nothing that like I will always come back to you. And honestly first call of response like 911 is the holy spirit and it's god like Come if you on. ever it's sinning or in pornography or like alcoholism or having sex with boyfriend or yeah. whatever first call of response is not to go into your room and listen to sad songs or like or like just ignore the holy spirit the first call of response is just to call on the, the name holy of jesus yeah. and just say god i am so sorry mm -hmm. and to lay down everything and honestly it's so much easier now because I don't have that guilt and shame because it's been such a long game I know that I know how the enemy works with me because he yeah. knows my cycle and I know his cycle like yeah. I know exactly what you're gonna try it's and so do so true flip it on it I'm like <laughs> all the reverse you, <laughs> like, know your weak you know spots, your weak spots yeah. I know my weak spots and so I know when I'm like oh Robin and you said a good thing yesterday well I was watching the Let's Less talk about yesterday it. about um, Craig Rochelle and his book about what conviction is was it Craig Rochelle mm. no it was um, oh, Chris Vallotton. Chris Vallotton saying what um, conviction is and it's saying um, you know to do better. Like, you yeah. know, you love not, yourself. Not, not putting not... you in a place of condemnation, condemnation where it's like, I can't get out of this. Yeah. I've messed up and I yeah. feel helpless to ha save myself. Yeah, yeah. And so for or me... Or helpless to change. Yeah, for me, it's like, I know... I. I know for me, if you ever struggle with this, it's do not flirt with sin. Mm -hmm. Do not even entertain it. And if you do, you find yourself in your situation, pull out of it. Or if you feel like you're going to tip over the edge or you have tipped over the edge, you're never ever too far gone for God. Like, don't yeah. be, don't give sin that power or the enemy that power yeah, over you. Like, oh my yeah, oh my gosh, like, I'm just, like, I'm too far gone and nothing can save me. I'm like, you're special, but you're not that special. Like, you're above God's grace. Like, <laughs> like calm down. Like, people think you're the chosen one and you can't, if we, like, and people like I bless bless people. I like, read comments. They're like, "Oh, you know, I'm too far gone." I'm like, nobody's too far. Like gone. there is no, you're, you're not too far gone. And yeah. it's it's again that is another form of pride where it's like, "Oh no, I can't tell you." And oh, I'm too far. Like no one's gonna understand. Yeah. It's like the enemy the devil is a liar. Yeah. And I love saying that. I want to tattoo it on my forehead. The devil yeah. is a liar because he is and he lies. He's such yeah. a liar. And so for me, it's so difficult sometimes because the enemy he'll always try and see and tempt you. And yeah. so for me, it's like. Just repeat, the word of God is a sword. And so I just say, thank you, Lord, that I am forgiven. Thank you, Lord, that I am chosen. Lord, that there's, mm. um, as far as the east from the west, I sins forgiven. Yeah. Lord, that wherever I am, that you are with me. Yeah. And that you'll never leave me or forsake me. Um, and it's honestly, it's keeping that. That's what has kept me for the longest time. And even now, the enemy always tries to come at me with thoughts. And obviously you were saying like, like you still struggle, but the way you handle it is very different. Yeah. And so again, I'll say, I said, yes, say it's not going to be, this mountain that you look at like oh my god this is the end of the world yeah um because it's not it, it really isn't and for me i've learned also, i know you know it's okay i've um i've learned for perseverance just to trust in the lord <laughs> so like just persevere like for me yeah, my journey is, is bare long you know like it's so long and for me and like, it will be though it will until be jesus comes back and sorry to interrupt sorry. you can continue now but I, I think i mentioned it before where it's like our soul will always be getting saved. Mm. Our spirit is saved. Our bodies will be saved when Jesus comes back. But our soul is constantly being saved. Yeah. And so it's just, you've got to keep, keep, keep trusting God. Just keep swimming. You literally need just to keep going. Keep going back to God. And no matter how many times you've said, how many times you feel, oh my gosh, like I'm not worthy. Like, like that's the enemy devil is a liar keep going back to the lord keep going back to the word of god keep mm. repenting keep praying keep pressing into god and keep your yeah. eyes focused on the lord even if you've taken your eyes off god don't 
think, don't wallow in your shame or self pity. Yeah, or don't, oh, yes. I took my eyes off. Do God. not get into self pity because that pity. will that will blind you. It will blind you, and you'll yeah. and you'll become so immersed in yourself yeah. that you just forget it's not about you. It's about God. Yeah. And Jesus, he, he wants to free you, and it's just honestly, I've come to the point now where. God, however long it takes until I'm 100% free, that I'm just, I'm, there's however nothing, long it takes, long it's it takes. like you have to be in that, that position where you are like, however long it takes, God, yeah. willing to hold on to Jesus yeah. for that long, yeah. because what if God got you free, would you still hold on to him? Listen, the times when I relapsed, I'm telling you, if God had freed me beforehand, I would, I would just say, bye God, thank you for your help, and I would be on my way, so yeah. I know, and honestly, I, there are some times where I feel like, um, sometimes I'm in this position because I know that I'm always going to go back to God regardless mm. Mm. Um, because I have an excuse to trust him. Yeah. Like some people struggle to trust God because they don't need to, um, which is why obviously people who are maybe atheists or like who have lots of good things in their life who don't believe in God, they don't mm. need God because they yeah. have everything. Yeah. And, but for me, it's like, I what are they will I trust God in? Yeah. Cuz I I I can handle everything, you yeah. know? It's, and so it's so good what you're saying and I just want to give some scriptures that have literally just come to mind. Got like three scriptures. Um but as you were saying that, you know, cuz the question was how do you break that cycle of sin? Mm. You know, when you whenever you get tempted, it will never be by something you don't desire. You will always be tempted by something that you desire yeah. and something that you crave. Well, it's first, so the enemy can't tempt you with something you don't have a desire for. Yeah. If he gave me alcohol, the water the back foot, Ilana in her old days give her alcohol, that's great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it, like we, everyone has, like, yeah. the enemy knows what you desire, and so it's just it's praying so that desire. God, not praying that you don't desire, but God, let me desire you. Over that. Over that. And not make idols of sin. Because yeah. when you so make good, idols yeah. of sin, you create a counterfeit God. And that's something that I had revelation of. Yeah. Because even though you're struggling, you can be struggling and wanting to get free, but you still have that sin on a on a on pedestal, a pedestal where, where you do give it that much power to be an idol of you, but then it becomes a counterfeit God. You begin to almost focus on what not to do to sin rather than focus on building a relationship with God. Yeah. And it's always when you draw closer to God mm. that you will draw away from those things. Yeah. Did you uh, want to say something? Yeah, so? just really quickly yeah. about... Um, just keeping your eyes on God, mm -hmm. um, and that, what I what is, is kind of a revelation. I know we see this a lot, but <laughs> revelation now is that do not focus on what not to do. Um, yeah. I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing that. Especially focus with pornography, on, yeah. and if you're struggling with that, or I this is the amount of times I've messed up today, or I've been good for the X X amount of days, and I mm -hmm. it took me a long time to get out of that cycle of. Robin's been good for two weeks. Robin's been good for three days. Robin's been good for three months. And then she lived. Okay, reset. It, God doesn't work like that. Yeah. And so it's getting out of that and just saying, God, I'm just going to focus on you. Okay, I've messed up. You forgot about that. Me too. Control, alt, delete. Now, God, I'm going to focus on you. Yeah. And just keep eyes on God. Because so I realised when during that long, long period where I was like not struggling at all, mm. that I just kept my eyes focused on God. I didn't think about what I shouldn't think about. I thought about... I'm just like, okay, God, I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to think of you. I'm going to pray. Yeah, which well, is... this scripture, one of the scriptures that I have is in Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. It's such a good scripture, and it's on what you're saying. Therefore, since we have a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every mm. encumbrance and the sin which so easily entang entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, yeah. the author and perfecter of faith, for who the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And what an encouragement. That is literally saying, lay aside the sin. And I love how it says, lay aside the sin which so easily entangles us. Mm. They Easily. I can't, I can't remember who writes Hebrews, but whoever did... <laughs> Um, they understand that sin easily entangles us, it, yeah. that sin easily trips us up, that we are so easily, um, what's the word? Prone. Yeah, <sighs> prone to falling We're into front, sin. Yeah. But it's like, let us run the endurance that is, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, but not just running it, but fixing our eyes on Jesus, which is what you just said. And, you know, whenever I'm struggling in sin, whenever I'm struggling in shame, or if I'm struggling with my walk with God, I look to the cross because the cross will 
remind you that your sin isn't too deep that he his cross didn't Seriously. mean anything that yeah. Jesus when you read Matthew read the gospels and read the story of Jesus or watch a movie on the story of Jesus because when you understand what he actually went through and what he did um despite what people you know people mocked him people beat him how people treated him he died on the cross for every single mm. sin every single sin and for you and when he sees you, he doesn't see the sin yeah. that you've done. He doesn't see Robin as the pornography watcher. Yeah. He doesn't see Alana as the alcohol drinker yeah. or the girl who's had sex with the, yeah. with the guys yeah. everywhere. He sees you as his chosen child. And so when, when you read this, it says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the one who endured everything on the yeah. cross. And then, you know, I think that is key so and, and pivotal to, if you want to break free from that cycle of sin. Yeah. And... I had another two scriptures that I wanted to share on this topic and um, which we briefly just mentioned in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says, no temptation has overtaken you mm. such as is common to man. And God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure mm. it. And I, I love that bit because he didn't say God, it said God will provide a way out. He didn't say he would take it from you. Wow. Um, and also, <laughs> I know. And for me, and people be like, well, God, I read that scripture and I fell into sin. It didn't say you wouldn't. He said he's provided a way out for you to get out of that temptation. It's he so didn't good. say, oh, well, he's provided a way out so you won't fall, you won't, mm. you won't fall into temptation now because there's a way out. There's a way out, but you have to choose that. Yeah. And sometimes it's, it, it, it's difficult sometimes. Um, but the more you um you trust god the more the easier it gets and yeah. so you're like, oh like for me i am so proud of myself because for a long time like say first I, it was the first time um that i was in my bed at night and i had these thoughts and the temptation and it did not overtake me and Come i on. woke up and i was so gassed <laughs> like that's like the first time i'm like 20 like this has been a long time and so i was like oh my gosh like i did it mm. like oh my god i did it not obviously i know by the help of the holy spirit but I was like, oh my gosh, like, I, I, I didn't, I didn't succumb to the sin. I just was yeah. like, fall asleep. And I could hear the Holy Spirit say, oh, like, God, what do I do? And the Holy Spirit just said, go to sleep. Yeah. Because I was thinking, but I wow. wasn't, I was thinking, I was, I was in my bed thinking, but I wasn't thinking sleeping. I was just yeah. thinking. And so I was like, just go to sleep, close your wow. eyes and go to sleep. Okay. And so I did. And it's in that, it's like, you don't have the power to stop yourself from sinning. Jesus has the power, but you have to be willing to draw on that. Yeah. Um, and some practicals in 2 Corinthians 10, three to five, it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty mm. thing raised up against the knowledge of God. Mm. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And when we are ready to punish all disobedience, whenever your obedience is complete. And I mean, that That's scripture brilliant. should encourage you, yeah. should strengthen you, that whenever a thought comes in, because Any thought. most sin cycles and, you know, um, getting caught in sin will always start, in, start the in the mind. mind. It do. starts in the mind and it starts as a thought. That's what but if you apply is. this scripture to yourself, that, okay, even though this thought is coming to my flesh, I'm not going to fight it with my flesh. Yeah. I'm going to fight it with the spirit. I'm going to fight it with the word of God. You must know the word of God yeah. to be able to fight according to the Seriously. spirit. Seriously seriously you just and then I'm going to cast down every single thought and lay it under and it might feel stupid it might feel silly because yeah. I know I've been in my room and I've just had to start shabba babba in and being like no I reject that thought of let's just say pride I reject yeah. that thought of insecurity I lay it down at your feet Lord I thank you that I'm chosen I thank you that you've called mm. me I thank you that what you did on the cross over 2,000 years ago mm. applies to me right now yeah. and every single day and so I reject that idea I loose mm. myself from from that stronghold mm. of a thought in Jesus name mm. and you need to learn to pray those prayers yeah. and get angry yeah, about it man say that Get like, righteously people, like, angry. Some people come to me and they're like, yeah, I've been doing this and I just, I don't know, I fear the enemy's just hit. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, if, if I were you, I'd be angry. Like, get angry. Mm. Like, Jesus was angry. He didn't repent for that. Like, yeah. but ang your emotions, you don't have to repent for your emotions because yeah. Jesus, if Jesus was angry and Jesus was upset and Jesus was all this, he didn't repent for that because he just mm. was sinless. So don't be like, oh, God, oh, I just shouldn't get angry because, you know, get angry at the devil because 
man, you try to take things from you. Listen, and when you realise how little the devil is in comparison to the Lord, they're not Children. even rivals because <laughs> the enemy the that. enemy doesn't even compare to the Lord. But it just seems it seems that yeah. way sometimes when we're stuck in sin and yeah. when we're so deep in mm -hmm. because that's all we're surrounded by and yeah. I guess in the world that we live in. But you have to know that God is so much more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. He is he is above every single thing on Come this on. earth. And once you understand that and have that revelation, but can I tell you, it doesn't start by just knowing, not knowing about it. It doesn't start by just thinking that God's that way. It starts by actually no. reading yeah. about him and getting in yeah. the secret place Don't and know. praying Get to him. To know. Seriously. Um, I actually forgot to finish off a part about, because obviously the stuff that we, are you going to ask no, no, a question? No, no, yeah. That, no, you go and I'll um, tell you. Several, like, you. Stuff that you struggle with, and obviously I've I've mentioned a lot of what I struggle with, and obviously in terms of the the new age stuff, okay. I got delivered from that straight away. Mm. Like I did not go back. It's thoughts in my head, but I have not gone and did not go back. Wow. And but then obviously other stuff, and it, and then I, when I was, you were reading that scripture in your Bible, I said the thorn in the flesh. And yeah, I was like, oh yeah. my goodness me. Yeah. This Pastor Gay would give me a scripture on it of how... Pastor Gay mentioned that in the podcast. It's so actually. good about yeah. having a thorn in your uh, in the flesh and it, it keeps you from becoming prideful. So sometimes, and I was like, oh my gosh, and boasting about mm. yourself. And for me, I'm like, okay, if this is the thorn, then so be it, yeah. you know? And and when I, I will get onto this, yeah, this last question, but God never used perfect people. <laughs> No, he didn't. He did not use perfect people. So grateful. He used Jesus, but Jesus was just like... Jesus, Jesus was son different. of God. Jesus is son Jesus of God. Jesus is God. <laughs> exactly. Jesus <laughs> is God. So that doesn't even count. Um, but even like David, I mean, he yeah. used David. He said he was a man after his own heart. But when you read on of what David did, he, he's kind of crazy. He ended up sleeping <laughs> with a gal who wasn't even his yeah. wife. And... You know, if he, he was ended, in this day and age, we cancelled. Like, do you know what I mean? He, start, he, he did some crazy stuff, yeah. but even Paul, Apostle mm. Paul, he was um, a martyr, Murder. he was a murderer, he would murder Christians, crazy. yet he still used him and he writes some of the most amazing, amazing books in the Bible. And so, God never uses perfect people, He just uses available people. And we watched The Chosen yesterday, and something that stood out to me is Jesus in the in the the guy who played Jesus that the script right in, he was talking to Matthew and he said, I don't no, let me get it right. He said to Matthew, because Matthew was questioning why um Jesus had um kind of raised up Peter because in the scene he basically called him from Simon to Peter in the scripture where he's like, Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? Um and he Peter says Peter the Rock. Peter the Rock um and calls him Peter and then Simon is now known as Peter and so Matthew was frustrated and he was like why did you raise up Peter he's been not nice to me he he's been harsh with me and um, mm -hmm. we don't have good relationship but it hurts it hurts and Jesus said I make people who they aren't yeah that was like and I was like wow wow That's he chooses great. people not based on um their ability he chooses people because he does mm. and then he makes them who he calls them to yeah. be. It's like he doesn't call the equipped, he equips, equips the, the called. called. And I think that's Bars. such a good thing to remember that God can use you despite your struggles. He can use you despite yeah. what you're struggling with. I mean, I, like, there was a point where, like, I was praying for, so I prayed for someone mm. and um, I'd someone had opened up to me about their struggles and I'd done, like, deliverance of people and then afterwards I had struggled. I did not need to be perfect for God to use me. I just needed to be obedient. Mm. And that was a massive wake-up call. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, like stop striving for, for perfection because God doesn't want perfection. He just wants you. Wow, that That's is it. so good. Well, this leads us on to the last question, which I'm going to like, we got to be like five, ten minutes I on know. this because we've spoken for so long and only done two questions. But oh my gosh, what a privilege it is to have this conversation with you. Um, the last question is, how do you live a clean life with dirty hands? So kind of what we explained before with how do you live a clean life even though you've sinned, even though you've oh. messed up? How do you walk a life of, you know, godliness yeah. when you've had a past of ungodliness? Yeah. Um, I, um, 
stay in the presence of God. Yes. Get in the secret yes. place. And I we say that so often, but I honestly that's what <coughs> kept me for the longest time until I took my eyes off Jesus. I came out from under the cloud of his glory and I was like, I'm gonna do things my way. Get in the presence of God. And I mm-hmm. don't just mean I've got, got links of Benny Hinn videos in this because mm-hmm. we had an experience at youth where we, I was we literally in the presence of God. Not on the outer courts, but the holiest of holies. That's where we were. And I Oh my goodness me, every single sin, everything that I'd done just melted away. Every, who I was melted away. Yeah. Like I literally, even after that camp trip, because we had a youth camp and the God just filled, we were like up until like five o'clock praying, um, well, just basically on the floor crying in the presence of God. And it was so heavy, but afterwards I didn't even feel like, like I felt like this body was not mine. This was God, this is God's body. And I just felt like I was just in it for this yeah. time until I go to glory. That's what it felt like. Wow. And so honestly, pray without ceasing i don't just mean you get on your knees in your bed you pray your music and then you pray you finish your prayer list and then you finish and then you finish your prayers and then um you're like okay god i think that's it thank you lord bless this time amen and then you leave the secret (laughs) don't leave do not leave like set aside an hour a half an hour and a half and you're like an hour and a half praying Mm. you're on like i was on on instagram reels for about three hours without knowing it. I'm in the same yeah. position, three hours. So yeah. there is, honestly, ask the Lord for insurance. It doesn't start with an hour. It can start with 10 minutes. It can start with 20 minutes. But honestly, you need to push that because there's going to be a point where you pray, then you want to stop and your yeah. flesh will pull you and be like, okay, it's time to go now. You're going to watch a TV show. You're going to cook your like waffles. You're going to, mm. you need to stay and press into God. And you want to, I mean, I could talk about loads of stuff about getting into like, realms of prayer, but yeah. getting into the holiest of holy place where it's yeah. just God and it is none of us is, that's where you find freedom. And it's um, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will soar mm. on wings like eagles, they shall. Yeah. It, it is that it's waiting on the Lord. Yeah. He'll renew your strength. He will give you strength. He'll renew it because, you know, I know what I have to do, but I don't have the strength to do it. There you will find strength. Mm. There is where you will find it. Honestly, yeah. and you will know God. Knowing God and knowing who he is. You can you can't fear someone when you don't know. You can't you can't so oh God, true. I, I'm, so I wanna true. fear you. It's because like, you don't know me. Go, you don't yeah. know me. Like you know me, but you don't know know me. And honestly, living that life of just trusting God and trusting him in every area by knowing him and getting into that secret place and praying and thanking him and regardless of whatever's going on saying god i trust you god i trust you Mm -hmm. and in that god will god will trust you because i know there's things that you know i want because god god does not trust easily if you know he doesn't just put his trust into any random person um and so he wants to know that he can trust you and so for me, it's like, okay, God, it you can trust time. me. It takes time. And I know yeah, we want stuff now. It takes now. consistency as well. Honestly, we want stuff all the time. And yeah. But yeah, being consistent. And for me, that's what I have to work on is being more consistent. Yeah. You know, say if I was consistent, it'd be, it'd be over, man. Game enemies, over. Game <laughs> over. <laughs> enemies, <laughs> enemies kingdom yeah. shut down. Um, it's so true. And There's so a... honestly, for me, I would say just remaining in the presence of God, yeah. regardless, and just being, worshiping, and remaining, praying. worshiping, remaining humble, mm-hmm. always remain humble, always um, ask God for a teachable spirit, never, mm-hmm. because for me, I, I struggle with thinking that I knew everything, and people would That's preach true. stuff, and I'm like, I don't want to listen to this, because I've heard this before, and I know exactly what they're talking about, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. like, the more, on that note, sorry, so can I okay? just interject, because I've spoken to a lot of people who struggle, or come to, for advice, or we come to have a chat, and, the thing that they say with the thing that they're struggling with you you give them advice or you say this is what the word says and they say I know I know I know I know and I found that honestly we don't know yeah the more I know the more I learn to know God the more I learn about him the more I realize I don't know exactly the more I know him the like I don't know anything yeah (laughs) and it's like if I did know I would not be stuck in this position because yeah. I used to do that all the time. I like knew when it. my parents, when mum and dad t- told me off or whatever, or they were dealing with me with an issue or something, um, I'd be like, oh, I know, I know. They're like, no, you don't, don't know. know. <laughs> you don't know because we would not be having this conversation if you didn't yeah. know. Yeah, you might know surface level, but you know it in your heart. Mm, you wow, d- that's like, so good. Are you, you, yeah, you might know it. Like a lot of people know what's right, but they do it wrong anyway. You know pornography is bad, but you do it mm. anyway. And so it's just having an obedient heart and honestly yeah. a teachable spirit and just being humble because that is... That is right, and I, yeah. I, I was, I was an, I was an I know person, yeah. and yeah, people would you say were. it, oh. and I would be like, I know, and I realized, it's so jarring. I was like, remember what I felt so bad because I'm like, you're giving me your pouring your heart out to me. And I'm just mm. like, yeah, I know. 
which I didn't know because if I true, like I knew what she was saying, but I didn't have it, understand it. And so I've just learned to say, even if I do know, even if I actually do know, I'm just like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're so yeah. right. On that note of, of praying and praying without ceasing, um, in Matthew 26, it says, keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. Mm. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Come on. And what it means by that is the spirit is willing to pray, but the flesh is not. Yeah. And so do not be... Like, do not succumb to your flesh, yeah. but push through by your spirit. Cru crucify. But I was literally... <sighs> I was literally going to go into a scripture, but practical wise, obviously what Robin said is amazing, but also having accountability, which oh, we mentioned earlier, yeah. having people to walk alongside mm. of you and communicating, not just to God, because you can be in sin and you're like, oh, but I go to God, you I know, I repent, God. but you've told absolutely nobody. You need people that, you know, it says it's not good for people to be alone. God created us so that we can have communion mm -hmm. with each other. He created us so that we can help each other. And so you have to be able to go to somebody, yeah. somebody you trust, Seriously, somebody who pastor. you can be accountable to. I Obviously, yes. Yeah. I mean, you can go to your friends, but go, go, to, <laughs> go to people who have that biblical knowledge, people who are 10 steps ahead of yeah, you, who have walked the walk. Don't, I wouldn't recommend, like you can talk to your friends, you could, but... If you're struggling in sin actively and it's something that you're really dealing with, you need accountability, but from people who will challenge you, who have already been there and done that, and people who have that that biblical wisdom. That's something that I would say practically. Yeah. And then in Matthew 16, 24 to 26, it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take <laughs> up the cross, cross, his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? And I, I think you briefly touched upon that earlier of just you, you um, with your experience, you were saying after youth camp, you know, your body was not your own. You it were not your own. So when you come to a place where you're willing to just deny yourself, mm. not just deny your flesh, but deny even the good parts about yeah. you and just be available and be, ask the Lord to be a vessel. When you do that, I mean, you will experience God in such a different way, but you have to be willing to let go of everything, yeah. let go of what you know, let go of your understanding, let yeah. go of the bad bits about you, but yeah. the good parts. And in John 15, it talks about um, pruning and mm. a branch pruning. Um, yeah. a vial. A vial. Oh. Let me yeah. just get the scripture up because um, just the accurate, I know it, but I don't want to misquote it. It says, I am the vine dresser and my father's the vine. I'm the true vine and my father is a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it can make, that it can bear Much more fruit. fruit. And when I read that for the first time, I thought it was just bearing, he was just pruning the bad stuff. So just chopping off the stuff that was no good. But actually he prunes the good parts about us. Sometimes he has to take away the good parts about us so that he can give more. Mm. Does that make sense? Those yeah. good parts about us. And when God asks, oh, can you give up this? Sometimes we're like, no, no. I don't want to give it up. The good parts, <laughs> yeah. you know, I don't want to give it up. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable with this. I'm good with this. This is a good part about yeah. me. But he's like, no, give me 50 and I'll give you a hundred, yeah. you know? And so... Deny yourself, take mm -hmm. up your cross and follow him because those who truly want to, who, if you're watching, who really want to follow him, who want to live a life just completely holy and just for our close God, like. to God, all sold out for God, you have to be willing to yeah. lay aside everything, yeah. lay aside that sin yeah. that it so easily, easily yeah, entangles, entangles you, lay aside yeah. your pride, lay yeah. aside everything that you know, take up your cross mm. and follow him. Yeah. And that doesn't mean... Um, you have to, that means you have, oh, you have to get rid of the sin. It means give it to him. Mm. Um, it doesn't mean you have to be it's perfect. Your, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean you have your, to yeah. come to God when you, ha when, uh, when you have no pride. It just means regardless of that, God, I'm going to follow you because yeah. I love you. It's so good what you said. And I just really feel that we just need to pray. If you could just pray with the people watching, because I know we've covered so much. Um, we probably could talk for another like three hours about this subject because it's so in depth. But I really feel that, we should pray for anyone who's watching, who's dealing with sin, who's struggling, or maybe somebody who's, you know, living a right life now, but struggling with those past sins and that shame from that and that guilt. Um, 
to really just be able to surrender that to God and give it all up. Um, yeah, so if we could just pray for them right now, that would be great. Well, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for what has been spoken uh, in this episode. God, I thank you, Lord, that those um, who are struggling, God, can receive every single word from your spirit. And right now, we just pray against any guilt, any shame, any condemnation, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you just speak to the hearts of those people on the other side of the screen, that they are loved regardless, that your love is not measured by their actions or mm-hmm. how, how well they've been that week or how many times they've prayed, Lord, that you love us regardless. God, I thank you, Lord, that we can come boldly into your throne room because of the blood of Jesus. Lord, thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for us. And I thank you, Lord, for a complete 180, Lord, a turnaround in the lives of the people watching, God. Lord, that the sin will not overtake them, God. But, Lord, thank you, Lord, that they will know they have authority. They have all power and dominion over sin, over the works of the enemy. That regardless, that they are a child of God, that they can still pray with people, that they can still worship yes. freely. They don't have to feel any guilt or condemnation. Lord, I thank you, Lord, there is freedom in this, Lord, there's freedom in your word, there's freedom in worship, and right now, Lord, we just ask that you give us a desire for you, a desire Mm -hmm. to want to know you more, a desire to seek your face, Lord, in the secret place, so right now, we just pray a blessing over each and every person watching over their heart, Lord, that you just protect and guard their hearts, Mm -hmm. Lord, let them know how much you love them. Lord, let them know that there is nothing in this world that can ever stop you from loving them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for watching and for you podcasters that are listening. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. It was so insightful and it was so lovely to have a conversation with you. So thank you so much for joining me on this episode. I know that this is going to touch so many people and your testimony is going to reach many people out there who can relate, boys, girls, men, women and whoever else so thank you guys don't forget to subscribe like and comment if you enjoyed this video if you're listening on podcasts do not forget to rate review and follow um, my podcast and I will see you in the next episode